Welcome in to another edition of our Cubs Recap Podcast, a presentation of our Recap YouTube channel and available audio only everywhere. You get your favorite podcast with my partner, my guy, Gordon Wittenmeyer. I'm David Kaplan. All right, Gordon, I'm sitting up the other night. I'm watching the national championship game on one TV. I'm watching the Cubs on the other TV. And they're up 8 nothing. Purdue's getting pounded. My wife's like, do you have to do a recap on the Purdue game? I'm like, no. She said, okay, so just you have to wait till the Cubs are done. I'm like, I can probably record this fairly soon. It's eight nothing. And she said, honest to God, she goes, hon, the Padres are coming back against this bullpen. They're going to come back. I don't know if they're going to win, but they're coming back. And I looked at her like, you're out of your freaking mind. You got to be All doing this podcast, man. Exactly. And she has said that before. All of a sudden, it's 8-2. Let's make a pitching change. Jose Quas couldn't pitch in my 60 and over league. And then they go to Luke Little. He gives up a homer. And then Al Zalai gives up a two-run homer, and they lose the ball game. My wife's asleep. I come in, <laughs> tiptoe in. She's sleeping. She rolls right over. I heard the recap through the wall. You don't sound happy. They lost, huh? Yep. She's like, Rude. I told you. So, so we start with this. Kyle Hendricks was terrible on Wednesday night. He was awful. That There's no other way around it. But yeah. my, I feel like I could cover, if I was the GM, I can cover the starters' innings. Ben Brown looks good. Ty Owens yeah. already had his rehab assignment. I feel like I can manage that till Steele gets back. The bullpen is way more of a concern for me. Do you agree? Well, your boy Quas, obviously, the fact that he's pitching is a concern. And your boy Merriweather, the fact that he's not pitching is a concern. He's yeah. out now for months uh, with a rib stress fracture uh -huh. uh, when he thought it might be day to day. That's huge, man. Guy had a sub two ERA in the early going and was a guy that you were going to count on. And we uh -huh. already know they didn't do a lot to bolster their pitching staff in the offseason. So those are huge losses, man. I, I don't care how big a bullpen whisperer your $40 million manager is. That's a lot of goddamn whispering you got to be doing to get something out of that crew. And yeah. I I do agree with you. That's a big deal. Now, I, I don't know if I totally agree like you can paper over the starter issues more than you can the bullpen. Bullpens can be fixed a little quicker and starters are harder to find, and you don't have very many of them right now. Ben Brown did a great job his last time out. You know, he did. great for the Cubs on that one. Um, hopefully for them it continues. But we saw, you know, he, he had butterflies his first time out. Who knows where he goes? He's got no experience before this year. And Wicks is still real young. That's the problem, man. Yeah, they're doing. A, they're actually doing a hell of a job kind of treading water while they're waiting for steel to get back. But Kyle Hendricks is a big concern right now. Tyone's still out. Steele's still out. You got kids filling up the back of that rotation. Sod looks good. But I would worry more about the starting rotation. That's just such a bigger part of winning. What do you do with, in your opinion, with Hendricks? Because, again, I got to run him out there again and see what happens. Yeah. But – you know, a couple, three more bad starts. Now you got to go, oh, is Cade Horton ready to come up? He was really good at double A in his first start, but are you ready to go from double A now? I've seen the Astros just brought up a top prospect. Jackson Holiday's coming up for the Orioles yesterday, and people are all excited. So maybe you could do that, but boy, I, don't I don't think so. I, I don't think so. Look, it, it, it's not like Kyle Hendricks is 34. He's not 44. And yeah, he had the injury, but he looks roughly the same. And, you know, he's never been a velocity guy anyway. Uh, we've seen stretches like this. I don't know that we've seen it this bad, you know, for three, three in a row. And he's given up home runs. He actually got kind of emotional after his last start. Uh, it, it looked like his voice was cracking a little bit. So I don't know if, uh, I don't know if it's getting to him. I don't know if he thinks it's more than he's saying. The only, but the only way you take him out of that rotation, in my mind, is if you think something's physically wrong with him. 
And right now, that's not the indication. So you keep running him out there and hope that he does what he's always done in his career when he has these rough stretches and figures something out. And has that one start where, where it kind of clicks into place, and then he's good for two months. That's what you're hoping for. That right. you know, I, I said this, Cap, on the last podcast. I think I said it before the season started. I know I was thinking it. He's the key to this team this year because you didn't have him all last year. And, and you didn't have him sort of in midseason form uh, much of last year. But if he were to return from that injury this year and give you most of the year as fairly vintage Kyle Hendricks, fairly vintage, you know, he's got a three and a half ERA. A tick above that would be great all year long. Then that's a guy that gets you there this year because we know what Steele can give you when he's healthy. Tyone is just going to give you a nice baseline. And you got these kids that, that have promise. And if, if you only have to rely on them at the back end, then you're probably in a fairly decent place. But the thing that holds it all together right in the middle is Kyle Hendricks. So what do you do? You, you feel like you have to do something with the rotation sooner rather than later. If I, don't Hall, you, I don't know what you can do. Would you? Why would you not bring Cade Horton up? Well, I don't know what the what the full roster ramifications are in terms of other guys, um, but you, you have to keep. Look, man, if you're gonna use Kyle Hendricks at all, you have to keep running him out there again, unless there's something physically wrong with him. And if you're running him out there, then right now, I believe that fills you know, him, Wicks, uh, Brown, uh, Imanaga. Uh, who am I missing? The, you've got your Brown, you've got your compliments. Imanaga, uh, Hendricks, Kyle Hendricks. Oh, and Assad. Assad. And so right now, the young guys have done the job for you the last time around. Uh, Imanaga has done the job when he's not getting rained out or whatever. Um, so your, your real question is Kyle Hendricks. And again, the only way to get him where you need him to be is to keep pitching him unless there's something physically wrong with him. And it doesn't look like it is. Tyone's already on the rehab assignment, so he's close to being back in your rotation. Yes. Uh, okay. And then cool. Justin Steele, this is the 10th of April. They had said they did not expect him back until the earliest, the end of April. So you're still talking three more weeks. Oh, I think, yeah, you're definitely talking sometime well into May, I think. And by well into May, I mean at least a week into May. Two and weeks. by the way, Cade Horton has made one start so far. He faced 15 hitters, four innings pitched, four hits, two runs, one earned. He's got an ERA for the season so far through one game with four strikeouts of 2.25. And the report that I read on him was he was really good, really sharp. Uh, I'll say I'll say this. Look, uh, there was a game they should have won out in San Diego that any, anybody should have won. The White Sox yeah, should have won nothing that. lead that they had. Yeah, with an 8 nothing lead, you know, the A's, the White Sox, the 62 Mets should have won that game. So there's one that just simply got away from you after you did a lot of things right early on in that game. That's coming off of a series win against the Dodgers, and otherwise you split. And that the other was two. impressive. Yes, and and you split the other two against the Padres. So those were a couple of series that you uh, looked at going in and dreaded a little bit with where the roster stood, where the pitching stood. But now they go to Seattle and Arizona uh, on a continuing a really long West Coast trip, and those are never friendly uh, to teams out in this time zone. But Seattle's not playing well. Um, Arizona's going to be really tough. I mean, that, and, and we saw last year when the Cubs were competitive and at full strength and, and down the stretch, they got, they got waxed by Arizona. So that's going to be a tough one. They might survive in, in Seattle, and then they come home for four against Miami, and then they got Houston that's not playing well. We talked before we uh, started this podcast that uh, Houston just gave up a nine spot to Kansas City in the first inning. 11 hits. Yeah, and 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 so they've had some they've had some of their own injury issues too. So you might be catching Houston at the right time. You got Boston right before that right after that and the Mets after that on an East Coast swing. So th those teams aren't juggernauts. Uh, and I just saw the Mets. The Mets are not a very good team. So okay. 
So they, if, if this is the stretch where they've got to go through a little bit of adversity and deal with some guys being down and try to paper over that, maybe this is the stretch for that. Okay, so let me ask you a question because, and I've said this to you before, I was not all in that you needed to sign Jordan Montgomery, but I was all in you needed to add more bullpen strength. If you look at the White Sox roster, there's really nobody on there that I'd go like, oh, I want to go trade with them. But the Marlins do have a roster. You can't tell me that the Marlins wouldn't be willing to listen when you've got a top five farm system on a kid like Jesus Lazardo and throw in a bullpen arm. The problem cap is we're this is April. And 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 if you're going to trade guys that have value, you're going to wait till a lot more teams are in the bidding. And that takes getting a lot closer to July. And so uh, that's why you hardly see any trades of any substance made before June, uh, really made before July. But June is usually when people jump trade. So you don't think that you could go out and maybe not a guy of that ilk, but find somebody, Oakland, the White Sox. I looked at their roster. There's not a lot compelling there. The Marlins, a handful of teams where you go, they're up the track where they would give you a bullpen arm. Yeah, I think you're in a position right now where, I mean, you could, you you might be able to find that. I don't know if you'd want to give up even a prospect that it would take, even if it's not a ranked prospect. You might not want to give up what it would take to get what's available. Really where you are right now is doing what a lot of teams are doing. The, the, the transactions you're seeing now are waiver claims mm-hmm. and the, and the you know, couple of dozen free agents that are still out there. Those are the kind of guys that you, you might go and – roll the dice with if you really don't feel you have anybody uh, that you can bring up. But you you mentioned Kate Horton. Look, if, if you're that desperate, what if you brought up Kate Horton and said, dude, you're going to pitch out a bullpen for a couple weeks? Might be worth a shot. I mean, those are the kinds of discussions you can have. I don't know that's the best thing to do with the kid. I don't know that's the best thing to do for your team as you look forward the next few months with this ball club. But – if you're looking for quick upgrades to your bullpen, that's got to be the kind of thing that would be in the discussion, given what's out there that that's reasonably attainable. As I watch this team, they've got to play cleaner baseball. I've seen Dansby Swanson with at least two errors that on balls where he usually makes those plays. I'm not talking about you know, really tough plays. I'm yeah, I, I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, it, it'll come around. He'll come around. Unless something's going and on that we don't know about. Offensively, Christopher Morrell has been a monster. Hit a grand slam the other day, 431 feet. The problem is he looks terrible at third. <laughs> yeah, he does. In fact, the beauty is you got a DH in the National League. So you can, you can play him every damn day in some form or another if you want to. And I'll tell you what, Cap. Go, go take a look at coming off of that uh, Wednesday uh, finale in San Diego. Ian Happ, your guy, Seiya Suzuki, and Chris Morrell are all 14 for 47 this year. They, they have exactly a 298 uh, a batting average. Uh, Morrell's got three home runs. Suzuki's got two home runs. Happ's got none, uh, but he's got a, a good, he's got best on base percentage in the bunch. They're all. 800 OPS guys plus. I I know you went to Vegas on Suzuki for MVP of the league. You got him. If, if those are your three guys, if those are a, if that's a three man race for the top offensive player on your team, maybe maybe All Star candidate, maybe going into the break, uh, the way they've started. You still like Suzuki in that group? I like Suzuki the best of anybody on my team offensively. Offensively, I might like Morell. Because, man, he is just lightning when he's on. He's got more power than either one of those two guys. And he just brings – I've liked him from day one. I know I said this last week, but he just brings so much energy. I don't like him at all in the field. I mean, both those other guys run laps on him when it comes to – to playing in the field. So that's not what I'm talking about, but I'd put my money on Morrell on those three at the end of the year to either have whatever, 
whatever offensive metric you want to use, OPS or, or offensive war, I'm going to put my money on Morrell. He's a really, really good player. What would you think about if he continues to struggle at third, moving, he wants to play a position, moving him to second and putting Nico Horner at third, who's a gold glove infielder? No, we talked about that before. For Morrell's purposes and what you get out of Morrell and where he does the least damage, yes. But what you do to the rest of your infield and your run prevention, absolutely not, because Nico is so damn good over there. And those two guys together, him and Swanson, might be the best pair of middle infielders in baseball. They're, they're certainly in the top. They're in the discussion for that. They're in the top two or three. And uh, you don't mess with that, man. Not 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 when you're trying to win. I, it, look, if you, if, you, if you were the White Sox and these were – these were your only quality personnel that we're talking about. The, those three guys, plus, you know, the three guys that we talked about offensively, plus your middle infielders. Then maybe I play with that a little bit because I'm trying to develop guys. But absolutely not if you're trying to win. OK, so Morrell has told people I'm friends with. He said this to me a year ago. I don't want to be a DH. I like playing a position because he can't be a DH. Do you like playing in the big leagues? Because I think that's the bottom line, Mr. Morell. I love you to death, young kid. It's tough to, to, to make a young kid a DH. It's really tough to do, but you're just not good enough in the big leagues at these positions. And we don't have second base available to you if we're the Cubs. So you're going to play some when we can get you in there. Otherwise, you're the DH. Figure it out. If you can't, well, then I'm. Then we might have to talk about doing something else. Okay, as you look at what you've seen from Imanaga, I really like what I've seen because he's shown me a willingness to compete up in the zone. It's not all this that that's there, but oh man, he looks like a guy who's got some. Uh, it's the right. Some testicular fortitude. Yes. I was going to say something along those lines, probably not as gracefully as you just did. Mm -hmm. He's he got balls. Is, he is not afraid. No. And he's got a personality. His personality is bold, and his pitching style is bold. Did you see I what he wore in the game the other day? Yeah. Uh, he had a Blackhawks hockey jersey on. I'm yes. like, yes. this dude gets he's it, He's embracing he's everything. I mean, and, and, uh, Yes, I, I like that. Here's the thing to watch with him, though, because everybody's going to go through it. It's going to happen to everybody. He's going to get knocked around at some point. I don't know which team's going to do it. I don't know why. I don't know what the circumstances will be. He's going to get knocked around. That's when it's going to be a test of, of that uh, testicular fortitude, I think is what you call it. That's where he's going to be tested. That's where he's going to be like, oh, okay, I am in a different league, or this is – now I'm going to sit up and, and take a little more notice. Now, does he, does he back off? Does he nibble? Does, how does he respond to that? Does he come right back and get aggressive and listen to what Tommy Hottaby is certainly going to tell him? Just get out there and do what you've done the last bunch of times. We'll see. But that's going to be what to watch for. It will happen. So when he gets knocked around, don't, don't panic. Just watch the next time. So would you tell fans that are listening, and I'll give you my opinion first, uh, if fans are watching this team going, well, what do you think through 12 games or whatever it is? I would tell you, I think they've got a very good everyday lineup. I think they got a very good offensive team. I think they'll be fine defensively. I am co concerned about that bullpen. More than anything else, that bullpen scares the shit out of me. Yeah, I, I, would, I would just say pitching. I wouldn't even break it down until until Tyone and or Steele come back healthy until Kyle figures it out. I, I worry about the whole pitching staff because it, you got to get the inning somewhere. And, and sometimes you can get them uh, from the bullpen if you're if your starters aren't getting a job done and, and vice versa. The. Odds are the latest odds are out. I wanted to get into these with you. 
Okay, these are the latest odds. First of all, division winner. Who do you think the favorite is in the NL Central right now? Well, it'd be really stupid if it's Pittsburgh. If it's Pittsburgh, I'm not going to believe another thing on your list. Milwaukee. Nope. It goes, the Cardinals are plus 200, two to one to win the division. The Cubs are plus 225. Mm. So it means for novices out there, bet 100. If they, if your team wins the division, you'll get back your 100 plus 225 dollars if you bet the Cubs or 200 on the Cardinals. Then you got to go all the way down to plus 450 as a serious underdog to the Cincinnati Reds. They're still favored higher than the Brewers. The Brewers are plus 500, and the Pirates are plus 700. See, the the thing is. The Pirates are a fluke. They're, they're not holding up. But no. but what the Brewers have done so far, not that they're going to win 90 games again, but they're not a bad team. They're, they're not, not winning. Th- these aren't fluky wins that they're getting. So I, I think I think four teams are going to be there this year. Okay. Now, to win the National League, the obviously the Dodgers are the favorite. By the way, I'm, I'm not buying that St. Louis favorite. Bullshit. I have the Cubs as the favorite. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's the Cubs or not, but I have a pretty strong opinion it's not the Cardinals. Okay, National League 2024 pennant winner. Dodgers are uh, plus 170, prohibitive favorite. The Braves are plus 240. Then you have the Phillies, and then you have the Cardinals and Cubs almost neck and neck. I'd put the Padres ahead of either the Cardinals or the Cubs. The Padre, okay, so after the Cardinals and the Cubs, it goes then the Diamondbacks, then the Giants, then the Reds, then the Padres. Wow. How about that? Yeah, and I like the Giants and the Diamondbacks, too. I like like, uh, (laughs) like four teams in the West ahead of anybody in the Central to win the pennant. And how about to, if you bet the American League, the Oakland A's bet a hundred to win twenty thousand. Oh, good lord! And the White Sox bet a hundred to win fifteen thousand. The favorite, very close between the Yankees, Astros, and Baltimore Orioles. They still got the Astros among the favorites. They do. The Yankees, Astros, the Astros Orioles, Rangers. Those are the four that have separated with the Twins, Mariners. Blue Jays, Rays, and Guardians all next. Yeah, the Orioles are deep enough that they'll be there all year unless they have some serious, like a Corbin Burns injury or something. And the Yankees are playing so well. Once they start getting guys back, they're going to be, I don't know, Texas, they got they got too many key guys hurt. Yeah. And Houston, I don't get Houston. That, that, that makes no sense. Yeah, and then it goes for World Series, Dodgers, Braves, Astros, Yankees, Orioles, Rangers, Phillies, Twins, Mariners. That's for to win the World Series. And then I gave out Seiya Suzuki at 60 to 1 a week ago with you. Seiya is now down to 50 to 1. That's because you've moved, you've moved the money. <laughs> you've moved, you've moved yeah, the line. dollars on Seiya has moved the money. <laughs> The the clear favorite in the National League is Mookie Betts. Yeah. Ronald yeah. Acuna is second. Bryce Harper is third. Freddie Freeman and Shohei Otani are fourth and fifth. Basically, it's uh, Dodgers or the field. Anybody, anybody in the top half of the Dodgers lineup or the field. So, Gordon, I'm watching the game Monday night. I told you what my wife said. I cannot believe that Jose Quas is still on this roster. Well, you've laid out why bullpen stinks, and they've got you guys that are hurt. Him here. Well, who are you replacing him with? I don't care if it's you. Well, that he okay, can't. but it's got to be can't somebody. Pitch. He can't pitch. Yeah, well, he's not the only one, man, and and look, the depth just isn't there. And and if he figures it out for if he has two and a half good weeks, you're going to need those two and a half good weeks. And by the way, you see the guy who who they gave up, what he's doing in Kansas City? Nelson Velasquez is killing the ball. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, the guy that uh, and and the the other reliever, the Cubs were after the lefty Sam Mall from uh, from Oakland. And the Reds right. got him instead, outbid him at the last minute. The guy that the Reds weren't going to give up, but they gave up Joe Boyle. He wound up in Oakland's rotation, and he would he had never pitched in the big leagues before. Well, it's uh, yeah. that's the cost of your relievers, man. That's that's what it costs to go get some of these guys you're talking about. But not every prospect makes it, and not every prospect's going to be on your roster because you don't have room. Not true. But 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 there. But I, you know, I'll use Mall as an example because I talked to David Forst with the A's about this, and and yeah, he said yeah, the, the Cubs were in. I talked to people with the Cubs; they thought they had him. The Reds stayed in, but they didn't want to give up Joe Boyle. He said oh, we kept asking for Joe Boyle, and they wouldn't give him to us. And then finally, at the last minute, they said yes. Finally, they said yes. But that's the thing. And that doesn't seem like a high price. Back then, that didn't seem like a high price at all, especially when you looked around at what other pitchers were, were uh, uh, getting, you know, what, what, what you were getting for other pitchers on the market. So wh- what I'm saying is that even when you start getting down that second tier, that third tier, those guys that do have big league experience and track records and can do a thing for you, like a left-handed reliever, He's going to cost you something. And everybody knows who these guys are in everybody else's system. They're not going to just settle for your junk. Well, I got to figure out a way to get a little bullpen help in Chicago. Yeah, well, you and you and about probably 12 other teams, man. Losing Merriweather is a major blow. It's, it, is a, it is especially huge and kind of, Kind of overlooked probably by a lot of people because he's a one inning reliever guy, but it's especially huge right now with so many other guys out, so many right. other innings missing from your equation. Because if he's not out, I mean, I'm sorry, if if Steele's not out, if Tyone's not out, now you go down and get Ben Brown to give you some innings in the bullpen. But Ben Brown's in your rotation now because of this. So th- th- this is the the domino effect. Yeah, I, I'm. I feel like if look, I, I don't want to lose Tyone or Steele. I got to see if they can be what I need them to be. But losing Merriweather, man, that impacts you on multiple games. It does, no question. And Assad was going to be in your bullpen. He was part of your bullpen until Correct. he was needed. Now so, he's in your rotation, right? So this is all the thing. So now this is where Quas suddenly gets elevated to a guy that has to perform when it matters for you, or you're going to blow games. He stinks. There you go. I'm done with him. Done. I told, I said, Hey Jed, get the win trust debit card sponsor of the Cubs recaps and take <laughs> that Cubs debit card swipe it, make a statement, go get me some bullpen help right now. You got prospects. Cash it in. Call Oakland. Call somebody that's up the track already and go, all right, pick a prospect. Not yeah. Tate or I, I can tell you, Cap, They, you do that, and by July, August, you'll be on the air ripping him for giving up X, Y, or Z because he had to jump the market this early to do it because that's what it's going to take to price somebody loose. You're going to give up too much. There, there's just nobody that's that's going to give up something without getting blown away this time of the year. Why? Because, because no markets have been set. The markets don't get set until the summer. And then once the market's set, now you know what a guy can command. And so now you can say, well, I guess I'm not going to get those three of their top five prospects for this guy. Or, you know, you know what I'm saying. And, but now you don't know what you don't know what the market bears for whomever, because there's other guys that are going to get injured. There's other teams that are going to get desperate. You don't know what the market bears. You're not just going to give up a guy for what you think is spec value now because there's no market set. You're going to have to get blown away. You're going to have to, you're going to have to come in with somebody. And you're going to have to say, Hey man, I'm going to give you way more than this guy's worth. Cause I need somebody now and I need somebody bad. And I want that guy, but you, you you're going to have to, it's going to have to hurt. And then I'll blast him for doing it. Gordon, exactly. have a, have a great rest of your day. You too, man. All right. For Gordon, 
I'm Cap. That's another edition of the Cubs Recap Podcast right here on our YouTube channel, available audio only everywhere you get your favorite podcast. Take that.